Welcome back to the channel everyone. Today we'll be taking a look at RGDPIN and as you can see I'm uh, on the official website right now and if you want to download the ISO and try this distro out for yourself you can go ahead and go to the tab download latest build and when you scroll down you should see the link to the ISO uh, and actually if you want you can wait out a little bit and the ISO should be updated uh, soon so uh, you can choose what you would like to do so here there is some information about the build uh, it's using the kernel 4.18 uh, and gives you some other information here as well and after you install it and boot it up uh, it also gives you some information on what to do and also after the installation you can uh, you know, update the system and all that type of stuff. So um, here is the software that comes along with it. Uh, also including, of course, the Deepin software. Uh, and tweaks. The hot corner settings are turned off, which you can, of course, if you like them, turn them on, turn them on by yourself. Uh, and also there are some random tweaks in the back end. And here is a video showing you uh, what it looks like and actually the creator has a YouTube channel uh, his channel is Antec Designs so uh, if you have some questions about the distro or if you have uh, or if you want to just take a look at it um, you can of course visit his channel and of course there are more stuff you can take a look at here so I'm actually Recording this on my laptop. I decided to uh, Give it an install and so basically what this is is Arch Linux featuring the deep and desktop environment with an installer and Unfortunately, I already deleted the installer But it should appear here at the top left corner and when you first boot up the ISO you are greeted with uh, the desktop and then uh, like I mentioned, there should be an icon here to be able to install the system. So, the ISO that I downloaded came with uh, Deepin version 15.7, uh, and uh, shortly afterwards, the system updated to the latest version uh, that was supposed to come out this month, 15.8. Uh, uh, and so, uh, that's quite nice. You can not only see this distro, but also the new features of uh, the new deep and desktop environment. So um, if you take a look here at the taskbar, um, I of course have some extra programs downloaded, uh, but like it said on the site, it's pretty minimal. Um, basically all of the deep and um, programs that you have automatically installed are there. Uh, and of course you can install other stuff uh, it does not come with PAMAC actually, but uh, it is pretty easy to install it to get it on your system. Uh, but PAMAC is awesome. It's my favorite package manager, and I love how just how easy it is to enable the Arch user repositories. You can just easily do that, and once that's enabled, you have access to so many uh, applications and software. So. That's definitely a must. That's one of the first things I did. Um, so yeah, um, and then there's, like I mentioned, the Deepin software. Uh, the two that I have forgot to remove are the voice recorder and screen recorder. I'd rather not have them on my system. Um, for that, I could just do, just install OBS, which I'm using right now, as you can see, to record the video. Um, but yeah, so, in short, what um, does this distro have to offer? Well, it offers Arch Linux, but with an easier installation. It actually took me about like five, 10 minutes to install this all together. And um, it also features the Deepin desktop environment uh, in a much faster performance than Deepin itself. Um, I've tried out Deepin in the past, Deepin itself, and uh, my fans started spinning pretty loudly, and um, you know my laptop started heating up and whatnot, and um, 
you know, it was just kind of sluggish, you know. Um, but even though here, as you can see, it's still using about a gigabyte of RAM. Uh, and of course I'm recording, but even when I'm not recording, it's, it uses approximately uh, exactly like one gigabyte. Um, but despite this, uh, I know I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, but even if you have eight, it should still run smoothly uh, and it shouldn't really cause you any problems. You know, uh, I've had the browser uh, turned on with multiple tabs and, uh, you know, it just ran just fine. So overall the experience has been great and if you take a look at the wallpaper here that's featured uh, I believe that um, the creator has if you go to the website he has a web uh, a wallpaper tab uh, and I believe that the artwork featured there um, should be his uh, I believe uh, he is the creator of that artwork and as you can see it's very nice you know very <coughs> detailed high quality not sure if this one's his as well, but I really like the parrot, so I'm just going to stick with it. Uh, but yeah, so, so far my experience has been great. The only thing that I kind of had to go out of my way to fix was the Wi-Fi. Um, so every time I would start, um, start up the system, I would get uh, like a watchdog type thing like um, something about D DHCP CD which is uh, apparently connected to the related to the network uh, I'm, I'm not very familiar with it all I know is that it has something to do with the network uh, and basically it will take up to a minute uh, you know to, to just run it and to uh, only end up uh, stating that it failed to, to enable uh, this D HCPCD thing uh, and so not only would it um, do, like increase the boot time and make it a lot slower uh, but on top of that 50% um, of the time my network my Wi-Fi wouldn't work it would detect the other um, the networks available and whatnot but it, it just it wouldn't connect until I restart my computer so I did some quick research and I was able to fix it. Apparently, I just had to disable that service. Uh, and so now it boots up very fast. Um, and it, my Wi-Fi also works just as expected. So uh, if you happen to use a laptop and if you happen to have a um, an issue like this, then do write down in the comments uh, and I'll try to help you out with that. So uh, as you can see, the OS Arch Linux this is my laptop here and I think on the website it said it featured kernel 4.18 4 but of course you know constant updates bleeding edge of course you know have the latest uh, of everything so of course it uses Pac-Man and um, yeah you know this is the deep in terminal so Deepin 15.8, what have they changed? Well, one thing that you can, if you've used Deepin before, one thing you can tell is right here, the system tray icons have appeared. I think that that's uh, very nice. And let me actually put this here. Um, that's very nice. I think that when they had them in the form of icons, kind of like this, it just, it was kind of hard to tell uh, what percent your battery was at or, you know, how loud your sound was, your volume. So I didn't really like that, and it also was kind of hard to, to tell, like, active applications like OBS or, like, the keyboard layout. So having everything like this, it kind of mixes uh, a regular taskbar with, um, with a dock, and I really like that, you know. And if you want it to fully look like a dock, like, no icons or no, no system tray icons, you could just hide them like this. Uh, but for a laptop, I think for sure I would like to know what my battery is at. And also, you know, it's uh, always nice to see your volume. The only thing that I think they still need to work on is making this uh, time here a bit more clear. Uh, you know, because my screen isn't very big, I can't really see this very well. So I oftentimes have to press the super key 
uh, in order to see the time here. Uh, which then even though I have made it uh, into a 12 hour format, it still shows this in the format of 24 hours. Which I, I don't mind, it's not that big of a deal, but it might be for some. And if we go to efficient mode, uh, another thing that you see, actually, that's weird. Could have sworn I put it in 12 hour time. But even then, this still remains. So, if you see here, this really is reminiscent of the Windows 10 feature and 7. Uh, and, and it's the show desktop. You know, I really, really like the addition of this feature. I think it's very nice. As you can see, it's very responsive, very fast. There's no fancy animations, but I think it's better without that, you know. Uh, it's much more productive to be fast. You don't really have this feature in fashion mode. Um, well, actually, you do. It's right here. My bad. And you also have the multitasking view, <coughs> which is another awesome feature. But I think that that's very nice. Um, don't can't really think of another desktop environment that has that apart from KDE which has it uh, in the form of a widget kind of like this as an icon but I think when you have a task manager or my bad um, a panel I think that it's so much nicer and just out of the way uh, when you just have it at the right corner here and also speaking of the hot corners earlier you can go to corner settings and when you go to a corner, you have a bunch of options which you can uh, change. But I'm going to leave it as is. If you want to take a look at the lock screen, let's see here. Here it is. Very nice, minimal. I really like that. Let's make sure I'm still recording because <laughs> I uh, pressed the wrong button. Other features that the new version has is when you go to the control center it actually looks very nice how everything is categorized like this very nice and not too sure if it has other settings here but the main settings uh, new settings that stand out are personalization so now you have the option to change the transparency levels so you uh, the default is 0.4 you can make it even less transparent or what you can do is you can make it darker and darker until it's not transparent at all. And you have this kind of black theme, um, which if you, again, make it to efficient mode, really looks reminiscent of Windows 10. But of course, I know a lot of people don't like that. They don't really like the Windows 10 look, so most people would rather uh, just use their own setting, you know, to whatever they prefer. I personally prefer it at the default. Uh, or if you want to kind of speed up the system, you can, of course, disable the window effect. Uh, not sure what happened there. Hopefully, um, hopefully that didn't affect the recording. But of course, that is an old feature. So, yeah. Um, oops, let's see here. I don't know what's going on here. Okay. Uh, so for themes, you have basically the default themes. And, um, also, there's the, the, the dark theme is available for even more, um, even more deep in applications. Uh, for example, if you have Deepin itself, now the Deepin software store uh, has a dark mode as well, which is pretty nice. Uh, and I'm sure there's more um, new features. I'm not sure if this is a new feature, but now uh, you can kind of tile your windows, which is very nice. I think this is awesome. Uh, this is a great feature that I think every desktop environment should have. Um, and also actually going back to the customization. Um, let's see here. So I have deep and dark, which I don't remember this being uh, available in previous versions, but it basically makes the colors here for the folders and whatnot kind of a dark blue, a darker blue, which I think um, looks very nice. So 
let's see is there anything else well of course you can change your menu like this you can categorize the applications or you can uh, show them to be all if you want the full screen menu and you have the menu looking like this as well um but yeah you know of course there's probably more stuff i can cover but i think that um uh, it's good like this you know uh, I, I think i've covered most of the stuff you'd probably want to know so yeah you know uh it's only been like about two days since i've been using this but uh you know it's just basically arch with the uh, deep and desktop environment and like i said um an installer um, but I think that it's very nice, you know, very good combination. Um, you got the de deep and desktop environment, which looks absolutely stunning. Uh, and also, if you don't like deep in itself, or if you don't like Debian based distros, you have just plain old Arch. Um, you know, you're up to date with all your packages and whatnot. And I think that that's awesome. I really like that. So. Would I recommend trying this out? Definitely. Um, definitely try this out if you want. Um, I've been enjoying it so far, uh, and I think you would too. So that's uh, that sums up the video. Oh, actually, here we go. I did forget something. So on previous uh, deep inversions, uh, when you would record the screen, you would get artifacts and uh, texture glitches and whatnot. Uh, and if this video I haven't checked the recording yet, but if it doesn't have that, then uh, Deepin apparently fixed that uh, issue with this new version. So uh, that's actually another really, really nice feature, I think, um, because many people uh, had that problem when recording, and now if it's been fixed, that would be nice. So yeah, that was basically it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.